Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Bruce Weber, President of Birmingham Unitarian Church and the Board of Trustees. This is the Birmingham Unitarian Church annual meeting, and I call this meeting to order. Let's begin with our BUC covenant, reciting it as a group. <laughs> as part of this beloved BUC community, I promise to try to be my best self in all my interactions, assume the best intentions of everyone's actions, be mindful of our shared
you set aside this time to recognize members of our congregation for their service and leadership. I think of leadership as taking action to make things go well. From this perspective, leadership is not a role, it is not a title. It is right action informed by awareness. From this perspective, we can all be leaders. Would the following people please come up to the chancel? Wayne Abbott. Larry Friedman. Brian Schindelbaum. to ensure that our classrooms are beautiful, functional, and inviting. We are inviting ourselves up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we have to convey that um, we had no idea what we were doing. We took at least a year and a half of Dwayne's time. We changed our minds. There were like eight of us, so there was a lot of communication. It was an enormous. Um, in fact, I don't think we wrapped it up till within the past 12 months. It was an enormous undertaking. And if you have a minute to Green Door to see the beautiful mural, I hope you will go in there and look at that because that is one of the lasting things that Dwayne did for us, besides all the beautiful furniture. And, as Bruce said, when you bring the, as part of leadership, you bring the dedication, he also brought incredible know-how, incredible familiarity with this art, and we are deeply grateful. Larry Friedman has recently stepped down after being our head usher for over 15 years. His contributions include creating procedures and checklists to ensure that worship services are welcoming and run smoothly. drums in the Sound Messengers for five years. He's also provided a variety of other percussion accompaniment for the choir. Thank you, Brian. Such important integral details. 
of, of doing this that uh, is just invaluable, and she's a great friend. Thank you. Andrea Zellner is being recognized for her, her outstanding work on the Speed Dating event hosted by the Leadership Development Committee earlier this year. This was a fun and innovative way for people to find out about what's happening in our congregation and get involved. Thank you, Andrea. You know, I'm going to say some stuff to you since everybody else did. <laughs> One of these days, there's, there's going to be a sermon called There's No Volunteers in Church. But until then, I'm just telling you, there's no volunteers in church. We're just churching. This is church. So when you participate in something, you are making church happen. That's the only way that church comes together is with people participating and giving up their time and their talent and their energy. And these five have done that in such an exemplary way. Thank you so much. I'm actually giving this report on behalf of Sarah Isaacson, who couldn't be with us today. She's the chair of the committee. Um, Leadership Development Committee had a really productive year this year. We filled the rosters pretty early. It was a really great thing because we found people who would be good leaders for the church, and they said yes. <laughs> Some of them asked for people not to vote for them, but I won't name any names. <laughs> So we identified uh, four board officers who serve one-year terms, uh, two interim <coughs> board trustees, and we've completed our charge of finding two incoming members of the stewardship committee. And all of those of you who voted know who those people are, because they were on your ballot. So new to this year and to the work of the LDC was what Mandy, Reverend Mandy already mentioned before, and that is the um, the uh, speed dating event that Andrea organized that was highly successful and we're very thrilled to have done that. A number of committees found people who were interested in working with them and I think that's, uh, and formed different and new relationships. So in summary, we've had a great year. Uh, we hope to have another great year. The people who I want to thank who are finishing their terms this year are Sarah Isaacson, Tom Cranston, Allison Gould, Brian Shantel, and Paul Vachon. 
Those of us who are continuing are Bob Clement, Ben, ben Ensroth, Steve Flory, Andrea Zellner, and I. And there will be five more as soon as we count all the votes. So do any of you still have ballots? I will collect them now so that they can be counted. Have they all been turned in? OK, great. And we will let you know later in the meeting what the count is and who the people are who will be serving on the LDC for next year. Thank you. Our next item is one of the things on the ballot, which is an amendment to our Constitution. Um, as you're aware, the Leadership Development Committee, the LDC, nominates people to serve on the Board of Trustees and the LDC for the following year. Last year at the annual meeting, we amended Article 11 of our Constitution, so the LDC would also nominate members of the Stewardship Committee. Uh, afterwards, the Board realized we should have amended Article 4 also, which states uh, which positions are to be listed on the ballot. The amendment before you today, which you've already turned your ballots in, but uh, this is just informational, um, is to update Article 4 to include the members of the Stewardship Committee. And this change makes Article 4 consistent with Article 11. So it's basically a housekeeping kind of amendment to make things consistent in our Constitution. So next we have the Treasurer's Report. Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Okay, um, I'll start the Treasurer's Report by just talking a little bit about um, BUC annual income. There's a pie chart in the annual report, um, which you'll um, see when you look at it online, um, which shows where our income came from. Actually, these are budget numbers. And you can see from this slide that um, pledges make up 64% of our income. It's the largest um, item. Um, second is 14% comes from rentals. So um, those, those are our two, two big things. Um, in the most recent fiscal year, there was a bequest of um, $60,000. And um, that was 7% of our income. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. In terms of annual expenses, the, um, you can see looking at this pie chart that um, if you add up the numbers, staffing costs make up 75% of our expenses. Um, and so the um, other items here, um, office and facilities expenses are 17%. Um, the mortgage um, takes 4%. The board approved a balanced budget for the 2018-19 fiscal year. Um, a generous bequest from Harriet Little allowed BUC to avoid cutting staff and programs during our new minister's first year. Um, as of April 31st, 2019, our revenues were 6% below budget and expenses were 8% below budget. But looking ahead through the remainder of the year, we expect the expenses to um, kind of like overtake revenues so that we'll end the year with a slightly negative um, operating income. The UC has a line of credit, we have not used it yet. And hopefully won't need to for um, the, the foreseeable future. The um, Cherish the Flame Capital Campaign is in its final year. Of, it was a five-year campaign. Um, total campaign pledges received so far are $1,318,923, and that's 90% of the total pledged. We still have a short-term loan, which is 100. As of March 31st, it was $163,000 balance. And that's being paid off as capital campaign pledges come in. There is a new capital campaign committee led by um, or chaired by Eric and Annette Sargent, and um, that committee is following up on outstanding pledges. The 
The um, capital campaign uh, was partially financed with a $400,000 mortgage at 5.69% um, fixed rate. It's fixed for five years. And at the last annual meeting, the congregation approved an increase in the mortgage to of uh, 55K. Um, at the time, we were told by our bank that we could do that. Um, but then some changes um, in structure occurred at Level 1 Bank, and it turned out that that was going to be very expensive to do that. Transaction costs were, were high for the amount of money that we were expanding the mortgage by. So we did not do that. Additional financing will um, need to be addressed in late 2019 after we see um, like if there is a balance from our outs outstanding pledges. Also, there are some facility needs coming up, such as roof repairs for the classrooms. Looking ahead to the fiscal year 2019-20, um, the board is working collaboratively with Mandy and Kim and the Budget and Finance Committee to come up with a balanced operating budget for this coming year. And we should be approving a budget at the June board meeting. Is this a time for questions? Sure. Okay. Does anybody have questions? Yes, Matt. The ten percent of the outstanding capital uh, pledges that have not been collected. Do we know whether that's because people have moved outside of the area, or it's existing people that we find likely it will be able to collect from? Uh, there's a range of, of reasons. Um, some people have moved outside the area and have been contacted and said they don't plan to. Um, to complete their pledge. Some people have, their financial circumstances have changed. Um, some people have died. Um, so there, and so there's just a, a range of reasons. And some people are still paying and their pledges are coming in on a regular basis. Um, some people might be waiting until the end to make one, like one big contribution. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Claudia. So, Claudia really covered most of what I have to talk about. Um, the, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone uh, in this room or who may be watching this video who have made their capital campaign pledges and completed them. A hearty thanks. It, it's really important. Uh, and uh, as Max inquired, there are clearly a few people that, uh, because of family circumstances and life circumstances, have uh, decided not to complete their pledges. Relatively few, this is a joke, are just sheer out of Unitarian Mormonists not paying their pledges. Uh, <laughs> but um, I just want to review for the folks in the room who weren't part of this process, uh, I just want to actually harken back this room here was part of a capital campaign back in the 1990s. And we really had to you know, pay off that mortgage in the early 2000s, I believe. Uh, and during that time, during that overhang of that mortgage, there was, there was some, you know, it was a, it was a financial stressor on the church. So part of my pitch today is to those who haven't made a capital com campaign pledge or who feel so moved to, to give an additional pledge to do it. So we don't have to do a uh, you know, a mortgage wrap up party or rent party. Anyway, just to review the, a few of the items that were completed as part of this big project, um, we replaced the connector with an all weather structure. <coughs> Previously, it was a decaying sort of cave like uh, wet strat, uh, uh, space. We replaced the parking lot and driveways and updated the lighting and landscaping. We re rehabilitated the Hodes, what's now the Hodes Family Hall. Um, the color door classrooms and bathrooms. We installed a gradually sloping floor and an accessible bathroom to make our space welcoming to people of all abilities. Um, and a couple of things that aren't on this list but were required by the city of Bloomfield Hills was to rehabilitate our uh, water feature out in front, our wetland, and also to install the um, uh, Bloomfield Hills Memorial Chapel that encloses the uh, garbage structure. <laughs> that was a few thousand bucks right there. Anyway, um, we go to the next 
next slide. Thank you. Right. So, as again, Claudia has already reviewed the numbers. There is a gap, and that gap needs to be filled. Um, and that and I and a few others will probably contribute, continue to contribute to this effort. And I certainly would welcome, the church would welcome that, uh, so that we can meet, uh, make the ends, you know, kind of close the loop on this financial issue. Uh, while it's overhanging the church, there is a limitation on what the church can do. Uh, there are some things that are needed even now that uh, the church uh, you know, requires um, funding for. So uh, to do so, I uh, uh, ask your generosity and forbearance. And are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. What are some of the items that are unable to be? Sure. The roofing on the classrooms. That's one. There are probably a few others. Anything else? Yes. Um, this is not a question. This is a proclamation. <laughs> when this building was built, before the carpet was laid, the children in the religious education were all invited to come in and autograph. So whenever we decide to replace this carpet, I hope it's a long time, it will be great fun to come and see those signatures. Pardon? Oh, we were all invited to join you. Oh, excuse me, Judy. Thanks, God. Yes, we all, we all signed.
doubled in size, they're doing really well, have had a great amount of training, and um, I'm really excited about the work they're doing. If you know anybody who uh, would like a phone call, a card, or a visit, please let either myself or Allison Rule know, you know because we have casual care associates who are fully trained, ready to go. Uh, I wanted to also touch base about the Committee on Ministry. There's been a slight change of plan from my original uh, vision for this committee. I had, I had thought that I would keep this committee as a committee of three that would have people rotating off. And I've come to the conclusion that I would like a little bit more people for a more robust <laughs> discussion. So uh, Lisa Damien will be staying on for an additional year and we'll be adding a fourth person to the Committee on Ministry. And then we'll see from there. Do we want to add more? Do we want to keep it at four? Who knows? We'll find out as we go because, uh, as we all know, this is my first time in ministry. And so I'm still trying to hit my stride and figure out what's the right amount for that committee and good feedback and good discussions to occur. Uh, the program council is up and running. This is really vital for helping me understand what's happening in the congregation. They provide feedback for me as well for all the various areas that they represent. Uh, I know that they weren't meeting for about a year and a half, so I just wanted to let everybody know that that very important committee is up and running again. And lastly, um, worship. I think it's been a great year in worship, and I want to thank everyone in person um, for your flexibility as we change some things around in the order of service, try to keep things out. Um, that is, I think, an important part of any new shared ministry as we're learning each other. I'm getting to know you getting to know me, um, and thank you for your flexibility again. Uh, I also want to thank Joan Cashman for stepping up to the role of head usher after Larry has stepped down. And um, this is the second last one. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is, this is a time of, of anxiety. I understand that there's been a lot of change and there's a lot going on, so I just want to thank you for your patience and forbearance during this time. If you have concerns, I am so open to talking with you about what's happening, and I know that Bruce is committed to that as well. So um, let's all just remember to breathe, and um, that there will be a time in the future when we'll be through this anxiety, and everything is going to be fine. It's been fine before, it's fine now, it'll be fine again. Thank you. May their memory be a blessing to those who knew and loved them. 
the most. May we keep them in our hearts as we as a community continue their legacy. May be so. Are there any issues arising for the good of the congregation? Any questions, comments? It's all good. <laughs> if there are no objections, we will adjourn this meeting. Oh, is there a... Oh, yes, thank you. We promise chocolate. There will be chocolate out there. It's all wrapped chocolate. We didn't want people eating chocolate here in the sanctuary. <laughs> and uh, I know you came for other reasons than the chocolate, but it's nice to, to give to you in that way. So please enjoy yourself uh, on the way out. So not hearing any objections, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.